my channel. Today we will continue with the chapter 8, Rotational of Rigid Body. So in this video, we are going to discuss equilibrium of rigid body. So what is rigid body? Rigid body is defined as a body with definite shape that does not change so that the particles that compose it stay in a fixed position relative to one another even though a force is exacted on it. If the rigid body is in equilibrium, meaning that it's at balance, means that the body is translational and rotational equilibrium. So there are two conditions of equilibrium of the force acting on the rigid body. So the first condition is vector sum of all forces acting on the rigid body must be zero. Okay, meaning that the translational equilibrium. Okay, so we can write it as F net equals to zero. Okay, F net equals to zero. Here we have three. Uh, exits okay if we say f x equals to zero meaning that the force acting to the left must equals to the force acting to the right if we say the net force for right component is equals to zero meaning that force acting upward must equals to the force acting downward if we say the net force on z component is equals to zero meaning that the force acting inward is equals to force acting outward and the second condition is the vector sum of all the extension stocks acting on the rigid body must be zero about any rotational exit. So this is the rotational equilibrium huh, where net torque equals to zero. Okay, so if we say net torque equals to zero, meaning that anti-clockwise will equal to clockwise. Okay, and equations for torque is equal to R F sine theta. Okay, so let us go to exercise 4, questions number 1. Figure above shows a rod of mass 1 kg is in equilibrium. Equilibrium meaning that it's balanced. So here we must find first how many forces involved in this rod. Okay, so 1 kg of the mass is actually you need to acting on the center of the rod. Okay, so if here total is 6 meter, meaning that 1 kg must acting at the center 3 meter below the rod. Okay, so this is 1 kg, this is the weight of the rod and here is 3 meter, this is 1 meter and here is 2 meter. Okay, and here there is a pivot point. So this pivot point there is a, a normal force acting on the rod. Okay, so here there is a normal force acting on the rod. Okay, so total up how many forces we have. Okay, we have F1, 1, we have the normal force, we have the weight of the rod and also we have F2. Okay, so out of these four forces, how many are known? Okay, so we know that F1, 100 Newton, and we also know the weight of the rod. Okay, meaning that we have two unknown. The first one is the normal force, and the second one is F2. Okay, so usually when we have two unknown, we will use top. Okay, to solve the questions. Uh, where the force that you don't want to find, you will take it as moment. Okay, so now we want to find F2. So because we want to find F2, so we will take moment at point Okay, if let's say I refer this point as A, so I will take moment at point A. Okay, so because when I take moment at point A, normal force will disappear as torque equals to Fr sine theta. Okay, so if I choose that point, the normal force, the radius here is equals to zero. Okay, so when I substitute R, the radius equals to zero, therefore torque at normal point is equals to zero. So we don't need to find torque at that point. Okay, so take moment at point A, meaning that the normal force will disappear as the torque acting on the normal force is equal to zero. Okay, so normal force disappear. Okay, next we go to F1. Okay, so torque, when we say equilibrium, meaning that torque anti-clockwise must equal to torque clockwise. Okay, so if you refer to point A, F1 here is actually anti-clockwise eh, because the radius, okay, the radius from point A is to the left and F is going downward. Okay, so this is the radius to the left and F is going downward, F1. Okay, so our torque here for F1 is equal to 100 and the radius is equal to 2 meter sine. So the angle between the radius and also F1 is actually 150 degree. So I substitute 150 degree. Okay, so F1 settle. Okay, now weight of the rod. Okay, so from point A, anything we must refer to point A. So point A is our, like our reference point. So the radius here is 1 meter. Okay, and then our weight is going downward. Okay, so this is actually clockwise. So I will write here is equals to the weight 
of the rod and also the radius is 1 meter sine is sine 90 degree okay because the radius here is going to the right and the weight is going downward okay so the angle between the weight and the radius is 90 degree okay next one is f2 okay f2 from the reference point a the radius is to the right f2 is going downward okay so if i draw here the radius is to the right and f2 is going in this direction so where the angle between the radius and also f2 is 90 plus 20 so it's 110 okay so i substitute in clockwise where f2 the radius is equal to 4 meter from point A, sine 110 degree. Okay, so here we will get 200, sine 150 is actually 0 0.5, equals to mg, m is 1 meter, g is 9.81, sine 90 degree is actually 1, plus f2 for sine 110 is 0 0.9397. Okay. So F2, finally, we will get 23.98 Newton. Okay, next, we want to find B. B, calculate the reaction force and adding on the rod. Okay, so for this question, because we already obtained F1, weight of the rod, and also F2. Okay, so we want to find N. And usually, if you want to find N, only one unknown, we can use net force. Huh? Because N is a Y component, so we will use net force acting on Y component equals to zero because it's balanced. Okay, so since it's balanced, meaning that the force acting upward must equal to the force acting downward. Okay, so upward, we only have the normal force. Okay, downward, we have F1. Okay, because we know that F1 is... Okay, we can resolve it into to the left and going downward. Okay, so F1 for Y component is equal to 100, opposite, uh, 100 sine. Okay, so we, I write N is equal to F1 sine 30 degree. Okay, and also we I have another weight. So I plus weight mg and F2 also going to the right and going downward. Okay, so we can resolve it where the angle here okay, is equal to 70 degree. So I plus F2 sine 70 degree. Okay, so I substitute F1 is 100. Sine, sine 30 is equal to 0 0.5. Weight is 1 kg times 9.81. F2 is 23.98. And sine 70 is equal to 0 0.9397. Okay, so if you total up the normal force, you will get 82.34. Newton. Question number two, we have a uniform beam of the length 3 meter and the mass is 15 kg. So remember the mass of 15 kg must go in from the center of the beam. So here our beam is 3 meter, meaning that what uh, 15 kg or the weight of the beam is at the center. Okay, so here is 1.5, here is 0 0.5. And here is one meter. Okay, supported by two private. Okay, here we have two private, meaning that our bin here is okay. Here is there's a contact surface, so meaning that this bin there's a normal force acting at point A, and also there's a normal force acting at point B. Okay, calculate the magnitude of each of the reaction force, meaning that we want to find N A and also N B. Okay, so we must draw. Okay, the free body diagram. Uh, okay, we must determine first how many forces acting on this beam. Here we have the normal force acting on A, normal force acting on B, and also we have Mg. So for this case, actually we have a uh, two unknown. Okay, we have N A and also N B. So as mentioned just now, when we have a uh, two unknown, usually we will use torque to determine the value. Okay, so if let's say now I want to find a uh, normal force on B meaning that I will cancel off normal force at point A. So I will take moment at point A. Okay, because when I take moment at point A, top at point A equals to the radius is equal to zero, and then normal force at point A, okay, sine theta, it will equal to zero. So I don't need to consider an A, okay, and A will disappear. Now and A setter now we go to Mg. Okay, so we know that top anti-clockwise must equal to top clockwise. Okay, so Mg actually is uh, clockwise uh, because from the reference point A, 
okay because we take moment at point a so the radius is 1.5 and mg is going downward okay so this is actually a clockwise okay so clockwise i write it here clockwise 1.5 is a radius force is mg so it's 15 times 9.81 Sign the angle between the radius and also the weight is 90 degree Okay, now is a uh, normal force acting on point B Where normal force acting at point B Reference point is A, right? Okay, so the radius is 2 meter And then the normal force is acting upward Okay, so it's actually anti-clockwise eh? So I will write it here Radius is 2 meter And um the force is at B, sine, okay, 90 degree as well. Okay, so if you cancel off sine 90, here also sine 90 actually equals to 1. So therefore, your MB is equal to 1.5 times 15 times 9.81 over 2. Okay, so finally, we will get normal force at point B is equal to 136 newton. We already obtained NB. Now we want to find NA. So when you want to find NA, we only have one unknown. So usually one unknown, we will use net force. Eh? Okay, so NA is Y component. So I will use Y component to find. And Y component for net force for Y component is equal to zero because it's equilibrium. Okay, so meaning that force acting upward must equal to force acting downward. Okay, upward we have NA plus MB. And downward, we have mg. So, Na will equal to mg 15 times 9.81 minus Nb 110.36. Okay, so if we press calculator, we will get normal force acting on point A is 36.79 Newton. Okay, that's all for this video. Okay, thank you. See you on next video. Bye.